टेलीस्कोप at the beginning of the play it is last seen he puts the case for the landowners who depend on the docile peasantry for their labor a relationship with galileo galileo scientific discoveries could destabilize so stating this the concept in view our discussion will be on ludovico for the important characters of galileo then we will be discussing in details about the weaknesses and every other thing that he could do now here we find that ludovico has not played a very fair game with galileo he is afraid that he might also be excommunicated by the church so ludovico is representative of the landowning class he is an ironic observer of galileo's prod with the telescope at the beginning of the play in his last scene he puts the case for the landowners who depend on a docile peasantry for their on for their labor a relationship with galileo scientific discoveries could destabilize the picture of background the hour yesterday his status demands that his marriage be impeccably in convention so galileo's rude provocation which prompts ludovico to break off his engagement would be a laudable gesture if it were not a purely private one selfishly made without the thought for the disastrous consequences for his daughter he was not concerned about his daughter what it would bring to his daughter he was not concerned ludovico was a rich man from holland and galileo student to believe in traditional values than science he came from middle class family who thinks science is not important and it makes him think more about science he states that he begins to learn or two about science i don't think ludovico worked out but he about the traditional values of work of work such as the horse breeding may look like a, he lived a better life than galileo and said greedo s a g r e d o the lower class people had to find something that they could make money or would it lead them to bankruptcy it caused ludovico to help out Galileo and Galileo with the new invention seeing that Galileo did not have much money in the play it criticizes the hardship and disappointment of work that other characters such as Ludovico Virginia Sagredo and Andrea were amazed by Galileo's work but at the same point he had pushed god out of the scheme and used his world view 
it seemed he was selfish towards Ludovico, Andrea, and Virginia. But mostly pushed Ludovico away from Virginia because Galileo is proud of what he achieved. And Ludovico were guided from Galileo and he probably did not believe in his theories. At the end, it created new foundations for science. In the world, some scientists have praised Galileo for his work, and they have always questioned if science is based on faith and reason. Ludovico Marcelli is a young member of a noble Italian family. His mother wishes him to broaden his education by studying science with Galileo, or so Ludovico engages Galileo as a tutor. Ludovico is not interested in science and has little passion for it. Just a minute. So Ludovico Marcel is a young member of a noble Italian family. His mother wishes him to broaden his education by studying science with Galileo. So Ludovico engages Galileo as a tutor. Ludovico is not interested in science. There is little passion for it. But he maintains a relationship with Galileo and Virginia with whom he eventually becomes engaged. Ludovico views the engagement as a mutually beneficial arrangement, which allows him to break the engagement when a relationship with Galileo becomes disadvantageous. Ludovico as a nobleman, loyal to the page 9 of 13 church, disapproves of Galileo's teaching because of the challenges to church teaching about the Bible as well as to the social order. Galileo's daughter engagement to a well-off young man with whom she is genuinely in love is broken because of Galileo's reluctance, unwillingness to distance himself from his unorthodox teaching. Galileo is brought to the Vatican city in Rome for interrogation by the Inquisition. It's a very hard process Inquisition in the church. The poor divine it might result in death sentence. So Ludovico understands it very well. Upon being threatened with the torture, he recounts his teaching. The students are shocked by surrender in the face of pressure from the church authorities. But it is a very common thing that we find here in the story. So I have made it very small for you so that you will not have any problems to understand. Such a small answer, I hope you will be able to understand. You have to read it. Next will be the answer. After the small answer, if any small answer is given, you will be able to answer. Now, Just a minute. You say now. What I'm trying to do. What I'm trying to explain it to you. Bertolt Brecht, the life of Galileo. Of course, very controversial. This is very controversial. This answer is also very controversial. Because 
in most of the books, you will not find it. And naturally, it becomes difficult for the student to write the very right answer. But we will go with it slowly and try to answer what is given here. Now here we find the question of breadth and what happens actually is very, very important for us to answer. So the question is, He said it very carefully that usually what they ask, Bertel Black, the life of Galileo, is the changing consciousness of the world. Responsibility of the intellectual to defend his or her belief in the space of opposition from established authorities. The key to Bertel Brecht's theater is the changing consciousness of the mind of the world. He was an adept in doing it. He knew how to change the consciousness of the people against the church. By this Brecht, the most influential German dramatist and theoretician of the theater in the 20th century meant that meant first of all the transforming of social relationship what he referred to as social overhaul after the overhaul of society which occurred in german democratic republic Brecht spoke particularly in his last years of the transformation of the world, which had become even more urgent because of the possibilities and necessities of the dialectical process. Achha. Now you see, as I told you, after the overall of society which occurred in the German Democratic Republic, Brecht spoke particularly in his last years of the transformation of the world, which had become even more urgent because of the possibilities and necessities of the dialectical process. The threat of the scientific age, he wrote, is in a position to make dialectics into a source of enjoyment. So, what he did was the social dialectics at moral level results in a moral paradox, which is at the root of the Brecht's theater. It arises throughout this place. Of the clash between ends and means, between the intentions, between the intentions and the effect, what it can have between the individual and the world. The communist student has to be very cruel to the kind, to be kind. Mother courage was to deny one child to save another, or Galileo, whose unscrupulous dishonesty makes his research possible, but whose betrayal of the truth takes science out of the street and into the service either of a court or a private study. This increasing and organizing differentiation in the presentation of people and the relationship according to their need, choice and end with each other subtly develops in the community of strength which it needs for larger change. 
practice his desire as a consciousness. He does not merely picture the world, but produces it. As Lenin remarked, human consciousness not only reflects objective world, but also creates it. Leben de Gediri, that is his name, 1955-1947. Deals with the responsibility of the intellectual to defend his or her beliefs in the face of opposition to establish authorities. In Galileo's case, the Roman Catholic Church, in life of Galileo in particular, this reflection of object to world and ultimately the creation of new ethics of the new world is quite apparent. It is understood that such a thing will happen or take place. But this has to be an admitted fact. So it is the changing human consciousness of Andrea, the nearest and dearest disciple of Galileo, though whom the dialectically synthesized character of Galileo and the characteristics of the new age are projected to his verbal party. With Galileo, a light is thrown on Galileo's theme of research. Everything moves. According to Gabriel Galileo, his research is everything moves. Galileo further says, where belief has prevailed for a thousand years, doubt now prevails. A great desire is arising to fathom the cause of all things. And then it may happen that a suspicion arises. For a new experience makes established truth open to question. Doubt spreads, and then one day, a man probably strikes it out from the record of knowledge. This has been said in praise of Galileo. Now, Andrea sings a song, almost like Greek, like Greek chorus with Galileo, the iconoclast man of the display. Oh, happy morning or be of beginning. O oh, scant of winds that from distant, new and distant shores. So that is the song she sing. You may be thinking that, why does it sing? Just to change the mood of the play. But Andrea is not mature enough to interpret the cosmic mobility as a symbol of coming up a new age. The age of commercialism marked by mutation of money and property contrasted to the feudalism which is marked by the stability of the property due to landed interest. You know, it is true that in fact, regarding Copernicus and his intention, he says it is very difficult. I'm only living next November. In his nascent consciousness, science is still a magic, the practical demonstration of which to his mother will amaze her. But Galileo wants to dispel the magic charm surrounding the scientific perception of Andrea because Andrea is representative of the new generation for whom According to Galileo, there are always new things to do. So Galileo is teaching him to see, and with Andrea, a whole generation is being taught to see. But the tragedy is that in the last scene, when the manuscript is being smuggled out of the country by, the, by this very Andrea, the student, the boy is playing at the frontier, the boys who would have been Canadian's audience are talking of devils and witches. 
by thing happen a way of continuing science and a way of detaching it from ordinary life. This social duality is the mirror reflection of Galileo's own character, which is further affirmed by the fact when Galileo dropped South America for the sake of 15 schooling given by Ludovico. Actually, Galileo has a complex consciousness. You see, all scientists around the world, wherever you go, they always suffer from their own consciousness. So actually, Galileo has a complex consciousness in which not only this, but also that must be said. But Andrea does not suffer from any such complex duality of character. He is as loyal to science as to Galileo. When Galileo says the authorities have forbidden them, Andrea can easily represent, but they are the truth. Again, he can easily sacrifice his own coat to his mentor. The half scudo was not enough. I had to leave my coat behind. Pledge. And we are probably can't separate science. Science from what you might ask me. Probably even separate science from Galileo. Galileo is the fact. His loyalty to both so deep that towards the end of the first scene, he declares, I should like be physicist to Signia Galileo. Galileo too spiritually depends upon Andrea as the representation of coming generation. As soon as he finds a new element through the telescope, he says, I want to see something that nobody besides us has seen since the world began. Andrea is not only able to experience and appreciate a scientific discovery first, but also has the capacity to undo Ptolemic Hawks, H-O-A-X, H-O-A-X. Ptolemy Hawks is what? His fighting with the Cosmi, Cosimo on the point of mobility of cosmos and consequently <clears throat> the breaking of the model of Ptolemic system, the symbolic foregrounding of the refusal of the system by time itself. During that time, anybody disobeying the church not agreeing to the cosmic system is a crime. Besides, for Andrea, the hierarchical structure swayed, and he can equate himself with Duke, with the Duke. Andrea reappears on the stage. As a young man, science is now no more magic to him. It has become the part of his life. He now investigates the sun spot, another important discovery of Galileo. I have seen a spot as big as a fly, swept away like a cloudlet. Then he asks, why don't we investigate the spot? Signor Galilei, Galileo's diplomatic reply. Rome has permitted my reputation to grow because I have remained silent, can't satisfy him. That is why he again asks, as a deplorable child, do you think these parts have anything to do with the matter? Andrea becomes alter ego of Galileo. That part which suffers from compromise of the other part. At this point, Brecht's stage direction says, Galileo does not answer, but we think Galileo can't answer. Galileo the man has to be silent for the sake of Galileo the scholar. He is both one of the greatest 
scientist of all times because he is looking beyond the universe. That is why. In his own words, it is when I am eating that I get most inspiration. Every scientist have the inspiration, some in eating, some in music, some in writing something or hearing to some discourse. But his urge is to go on with his researches, is his basic instinct. <laughs> so the expression of his essential self. Every scientist is peculiar in his own way. He has his own way of thinking. That is why as soon as it is reported that Cardinal Barberini, a man of science, is going to be the next Pope, Galileo starts his solo experiment with new hope. Now Andrea is happy because he has found his idol again in his niche. He hymns a song almost like chorus. The Bible says the earth stands still. My dears, a fact which every learned doctor proves. The Holy Father grabs it by the ears and holds it hard and fast. And yet it moves. Brother Zoni asks, who command the earth to stand still? Galileo, if your theory is to be considered with great respect, you should be able to answer my question. And they reply, and the genesis and the beginning, the Neches, the great landowning families, according to Andrea, who are only willing to kiss people's feet if he will trample down with the people with them. This was always there till time immemorial, since a long time. Those who are strong people, they would like their feet to be kissed. The suggestion is that they will, they will all, in their class interests, join together against anything that encourages the peasants to think of themselves. That is why in this scene, seven, scene eight, Virginia's betrothed, Ludovico breaks off the engagement. Ludovico is a landowner and counts on the authority of religion to keep his peasants properly submissive. The landed interests are on, one, are on the side of the church. In the fidelity and hierarchy, hierarchically organized church, which owning about a third of the land in every country, occupied a position of tremendous power in the feudal organization. Besides, the clergy was the only educated class. Therefore, jurisprudence, natural science, philosophy, the court mark, everything was dealt with according to whether his, its content agreed or disagreed with the doctrines of the church. This is called juristic socialism. That is why Andrea and Galileo are elated at the enthronement of the new pope, who might help in officialization of truth. From the womb of church-based foundation of feudalism, however, a new class appeared at that time in opposition to the big land ownership. The Catholic world outlook again to quote what the Catholic world outlook again to quote Marx. Passion and the pattern of feudalism is no longer adequate for this new class and its condition and production of exchange. The new class are, are on Galileo's side. They know whatever Galileo is saying is right. Galileo is popular among them because of his utilitarianism, 
utilitarianization of science. They are mentioned here and there. The navigators who want better charts and instruments. The linen merchants who want better looms. Kadarzani, the lens maker. Pani, the iron founder, who says, We have friends throughout the world of commerce and offers help to Galileo and the glass cutter, whose help he tries to take. Everyone. Every common man, everyone who understands instruments and machines and can make use of his invention knows it's nonsense that truth in physics cannot make truth in fact. Nevertheless, this new class remained for a long time, captive in the bonds of almighty geology. <coughs> Almighty theology means the theology, the belief in God. The belief in God, if you have, is very difficult to take it out of your mind. So in the Pauline scene, the idea that Earth moves down the sun has been taken up by the people to the theme of the carnival. The treatise is a huge joke against the established authorities and all the old notions and decorum. See, the church is first. In the Christian world, if the church says no to something, means it no. You cannot make it yes. For that, even the church can excommunicate you and declare you to die. A death, a holy death. If Galileo can change the order of heaven by the decentralization of the earth from the Ptolemaic cosmos, they seem to imply why should and could not they dethrone the papal institution from social order. If Chandrayaan would have been in Galileo's time, then God knows what would have happened to Galileo. His head would have been severed from his body. So this thought is suggested rather than explicitly stated in the cosmic songs of dances of shopkeepers, workmen, beggars and servants. But Galileo himself, of course, as he had never suggested this. The notion suggests itself to the uneducated populace in Galileo, a common man and a scholar always vie with each other. When Galileo, the man, thinks of commercial productivity of telescopes, then Galileo, the scholar, considers the scientific potential of the same. The common man in him appears to be tortured, even for the sake of truth. On the other hand, the scholar has to stick to the point of cosmic mobility in order to re-establish the Copernican fact socially. So again, a moral paradox takes place. What will Galileo do? Will he record? Will he forget? How laboriously the new truth was fought for? What sacrifices it cost? How difficult it was to see that things were like thus and not thus. So in praise of doubt, Brecht said. Galileo saw what he saw with his own eyes through the telescope, through the lenses. The telescope, the concept of which is uh, to be stolen. But Brecht doesn't want so. Again, in this crucial juncture of the play, like Greek chorus, he shouts suddenly, and the sun is the center of the universe and the motion is in its place and the earth is not the center who showed it to us. So once Galileo said, he who does not know the truth is merely an idiot, but he knows it and calls it a lie, is a criminal. He's right, not wrong at all. And he reminds us this too, in scene 11, and comments 
Force has not prevailed. The man is not afraid of death. But tragically enough, Galileo is afraid of death. The very show of instruments of force has prevailed over him. Galileo recounts, Titan of Hill is crushed by the organized machinery. Andrea screams at him, wine bags, nail eater. Have you saved your precious skin? Galileo has forgotten the lines. You who are a leader of men, do not forget that you are that because you doubted other leaders. In praise of doubt, Brecht said, he uttered such words. So, America, so Andrea cannot look at him. He must go. Galileo seems to be a criminal, not only for his betrayal of the truth, but also in frustrating the fate of his comrades. Andrea in the next scene informs us, Herder Zoni is once again grinding lenses in some shop in Milan. Fulganzio, and our little monk, has given up research and has returned to the bosom of the church. And Andrea cannot become a physicist. One recantation has shattered several lives. There is no greater crime than leaving to court from Brecht. In friends, what do you count on? Only on this? They are not leaving? There is no greater crime than leaving Brecht? But did Galileo leave his research as of science too? No, it can't be possible. Science is the nucleus of its existence. Science is the nucleus of his existence, so even in his imprisonment, he continues to work and search for truth, for the sake of truth only, at the cost of his decaying eyesight. Without any hope that day, that one day posterity will find out his discoursey, D-I-S-C-O-R-S-I. Such a devoted son of science can't forget the deceit committed by himself to his mother. Once his reply to Andrea's cry, pity the man that has no heroes, was pity the country that needs heroes. Years later, when the same disciple visits him for the last time, going before going to Holland, he hands him the manuscript which his recantation has enabled him to complete. So this disciple thinking, this disciple thinking that he understands at last the motive of his recantation, hails him as a hero. So hails him as a hero. Now, but Galileo, what about Galileo? Let us think about him. Who knew clearly what he meant when he deplored the fact country should require heroes. Refuses Andrea's praise, for he can already anticipate the terrible import of his action. He sees himself as a criminal because he surrendered his knowledge. Any scientist would do. According to him, to those in power to use or not to use or to, to misuse, just as suited their purposes. But Brett himself says, as a playwright should, in spite of all, he is a hero, and in spite of all, he becomes a criminal. Actually, Galileo is neither a hero nor a criminal. He is a cunning scientist of the new age, an age in which it is better tainted than empty. This is new science, new ethics. Galileo's progressive thesis was that God is in us or nowhere. Church forced to establish a reactionary antithesis that Earth is the center of the universe. Through the clash of thesis and antithesis, the synthesis is achieved. According to Marx, it was a secularization, the theological outlook. Human right took the place of dogma, of divine right. The state took the place of the church. 
or religion Karl Marx has written. State what his own benefit brings up scientists like Galileo, who under the shelter of the state at once enjoys delicious goose and scientific research. But neither science nor the dialectics of historical materialism can stop in a certain point of synthesis. Human civilization proceeds through the negation of the negation. After the negation of the church, there should be the negation of the state under whose power new machines will represent nothing but new means of oppression. The movement of the stars have become clearer, but to a mass of people, the movement of their masters are still incalculable. Again, a socio-economic conflict will take place between the rethesis of capitalist master and recant and re-antithesis of oppressed mass. After this, the final synthesis will be achieved. But this historical probability is growing in the womb of posterity. To end with Andrea, we are really only at the beginning. Andrea is right. Whenever you try to do something which is really to be good, to be done, at that time you become the subject of discussion. And what happens is this,